Well, there I was, working on making a timely video on the importance of the upcoming armor trimming feature, and how you can add infinite armor trims with just a data pack, when I noticed something. In my research into armor trims, I learned about Minecraft's clever way of assigning dynamic color palettes, how texture packs interact with data packs, and even how easy it is to format some of these things yourself. But what I also stumbled upon was a secret left by the developers of Mojang that, if intentional, could be absolutely game-changing for the future of Minecraft. I'll put it on screen now. D do you see it? I didn't notice it either for a good while. But before we delve into the mystery, let's talk about something I have personally wanted in Minecraft for a long time. And trust me, it relates to this big secret. You see, all of this talk about armor trims got me thinking of another game with cosmetic and powerful sets of armor. That's right, Terraria. From the boss battling to the chaotic adventuring, there are so many things that this 2D sandbox survival just gets right. But one of the things I love most about Terraria is the ability to create a unique playstyle based on the armor that you wear. Sure, a lot of armor in the game is made for defensive capabilities like any other RPG, but in Terraria you can actually specialize in certain types of damage, or even unique game mechanics depending on which set you don. For example, wearing the early game Jungle set reduces the cost of mana, while the near equitable Meteor set gives you infinite mana when you are using the Space Gun. The reason the game does this is to allow each player to find a playstyle that best suits them, without sacrificing much in the way of mechanical defense. You can think of them like added abilities to preset tiers of armor that help define your unique playthrough. Now let's jump back into the third dimension. Something that I've always believed Minecraft has lacked in is real identity in its armor sets. For years, the biggest differences in armor was simply its color, and perhaps most importantly, its defensive values. Sure. Gold was always a bit more enchantable, and leather could be dyed, but these weren't incentives to cause the player to pick them over their stronger sets. Yes, armor could be given enchantments to set them apart, but all materials of set armor could gain the same enchantments, if just at a higher XP cost. The only difference there was that certain slot pieces could only be enchanted with related enchantments that made sense like respiration on helmets or feather falling on boots. It made almost every Minecraft player's journey the exact same when upgrading their armor. Skip leather entirely for its resource cost, get a full set of iron until you grind for enough diamonds to get yourself a full set, then enchant that set with mending and never worry about changing armor again. This ignored leather, gold, and the unobtainable chain armor, as they served no real benefit to pick over their beefier, easy-to-craft cousins. The journey for defense became stale and predictable. That was until, of course, the Elytra was introduced. If you can, try thinking all the way back to 1.9, which was released in 2016? Already? So that's like, what, seven years ago? Oof, okay Mojang, way to hit me with a TARDIS on your way out. Back in 1.9, the developers made a game-changing addition that revamped the armor scene after so many years of the same old boring journey. Well, slightly revamped. The Elytra was an incredibly exciting feature that offered players a way to fly high above their Minecraft worlds in survival. Sure, you had to beat the literal entire game in order to get one, but they felt like worthy endgame loot. A way to take to the skies after so long and admire your world as you created it up until the point that you bested Minecraft's most wanted. But, uh, hardcore players were not particularly fond of how you used the Elytra, or, more accurately, where you had to wear it. You see, Mojang saw the Elytra as a pair of wings, making it logical to take up the chestplate slot. This meant that the super enchanted diamond chestplate you used to slay the dragon? Yeah, you're gonna have to hang that by the door if you want to get your glide on. Since then, players have argued with Mojang relentlessly to have a way for the Elytra to be somehow combined with the chestplate, but according to this thread by Mojang themselves, it was an intentional choice for designing balance in-game to replace your armor with the ability to fly. Also, can we just take a second here to appreciate this website? This is a page of all of the old rejected community suggestions made commonly to Mojang, and I didn't even know this place existed. It's like a somber graveyard for fan-favorite ideas, like vertical slabs or guard villagers. Also, seriously Mojang? Dead set against native redstone timers? Do you know how much easier my boss tutorials would be if I could just use a redstone timer native from- <clears throat> Uh, anyway. 
Old ideas aside, the elytra was added and takes up your chest plate slot in exchange for the ability of flight. But wait a second. An armor piece granting an ability? Isn't that something we just mentioned from Terraria? That's right, this is actually the first instance we see of the armor game slowly start to get more interesting. But not by much. Even though the Elytra offered a new way for players to gear up, most players still just wore full diamond and swapped to an Elytra for relevant tasks. But still, that was Mojang's first timid step into the world of varied armor. And we know it didn't stop there. Next up came the armor piece that I don't think anyone saw coming. Wearing a literal turtle shell on your head. Turtle shells were introduced as drops from turtles in 1.13. Although, not really, because this was around the time that Mojang started its No More Useful Drops From Passive Mobs Because Hunting Is Bad arc. Which, fair enough. Ethical game design is something we need to see more of in video games. Still though, that polar bear attacked me! All I did was rightfully claim its adorable little cub as Samson, my new best friend, and it tried to maul me. So you think the least I could get is a bit of fur for my troubles, right? Regardless, Mojang luckily did still give us a way to obtain the turtle shell- er, Scoot. They let us obtain Scoot. But then five Scoot could be crafted into a full turtle shell and bish bash bosh, the next logical thing to do is throw that baby on your head. But here's where Mojang improved from the Elytra, because this time the turtle shell actually counted as armor, granting the same defensive bonus as iron, if you can believe that. And on top of that, the turtle helmet comes with a unique ability as well. The ability to breathe underwater for an additional 10 seconds before needing to recharge with air. So let's back up a sec just to make sure we got this right. Mojang added a new varied piece of armor with a novel way of obtaining it that has an armor value in the same tier as an existing tier with a unique added ability? This is starting to sound more and more like we're getting those varied sets of armor I've always dreamed about. The turtle shell of course did have its own downsides as well, proving objectively harder to repair as scoots were more tedious to farm than simply mining for more iron. But enough about soup shells. Where did the varying armor journey go from here? Well, luckily we wouldn't have to wait much longer, as in 1.16, Mojang made a few huge strides in more varying armor builds. One of those ways was of course in adding netherite armor as a new tier beyond diamond, and while there isn't much to say for variants on this front as it was just a better logical upgrade to diamond, I want to note that netherite was also given the special ability to resist durability loss from fire or lava, even to the point where the dropped item itself could survive in fire or lava, something that up until this point no other survival item in the game could do. But we'll revisit netherite in a bit. The other big change Mojang made was to how gold armor now functioned in the nether. Up until this point, gold had really been on the back burner for old survival Minecraft. Mojang even tried to fix this by making its enchantability way higher than that of other tiers, but its incredibly low durability coupled with its weak protection led to very few players ever using it for adventuring. But with the addition of greedy piglins in 1.16, it was the perfect time for Mojang to add yet another special ability, although this time to a material that already existed. When wearing gold armor around piglins in the nether, they won't immediately turn hostile and attack you. Wearing any other armor obviously provokes these high class residents of the nether, as even diamond is filthy and below their standards of shiny. So even though the armor itself wasn't super useful in the overworld, it quickly became a necessity to have at least one piece on while exploring the nether to ensure peaceful relations with the neighbors. So that's technically three pieces or sets that were added or changed in Minecraft to include unique abilities, but we're not quite done yet. Finally, in Minecraft 1.17, Freezing was a new effect added, and with it a much needed upgrade for leather armor. Very quickly, freezing in Minecraft happens when you are submerged in powder snow for too long. It honestly takes a couple seconds and is pretty easy to avoid, but still not something you want happening when you're racing down a mountain followed by a horde of angry goats. So to give our last survival set a reason for existing, the developers decided that leather armor should act as an insulator, preventing freezing altogether. But then they took it a step further, giving leather boots the added ability of being able to walk safely across powder snow. So now it might be pertinent to enchant up those leather booties you've been keeping warm by the fire the next time you go climbing, because they might just save your frigid behind. Alright, that was a lot of armor history, but let's recap what's changed over the years. Armor went from being boring and predictable, to allowing players the option of flight, then allowing the option to birth turtles for water breathing, then again to a new set with flame durability immunity, again with deceiving gold-digging piglins, and finally, once more, 
with keeping Jack Frost up in his icy cave. Whoa, would you look at that? If we take the quintessential piece from each new set, bar netherite, we have a new full set of variable armor that is way more exciting than just plain iron or diamond. Sure, we do lose some protective or repair benefits, but at least now players have a choice when it comes to being protected in their world. And that of course brings us to the present, with armor trims being added just over the horizon. So why take a trip down memory lane? Well, I believe that for a long time now, Mojang has been trying to give players more way to express themselves through their tools. We saw the spyglass be a sort of utility tool for exploring, maps and banners as a way to chart lands, lodestone compasses to traverse dimensions, and crossbows to launch alternate ammo. It's always been a huge goal of Mojang's to allow players to create an identity for themselves and make Minecraft a game of their own. So it makes sense that giving different armor more uses allows players to use whatever armor they want at various tiers without necessarily feeling like they're being forced down a specific path. Is Netherite objectively still the best defensive set in the game? Sure! No other armor right now can match its durability and defense, but that doesn't mean that every player has to wear it all the time. But now, even if they do, they can use armor trims to further give identity. Now every netherite bearer in Minecraft can rock a style of their choosing, while still maintaining the same defensive bonuses as everyone else. Mojang truly has evolved to the point of giving players so many options to defend themselves and express themselves both cosmetically and with upgrades. So to Mojang, I say a very good job indeed. Wait, did you hear it? I said that Mojang has allowed players to express themselves through upgrades. Why did I phrase it like that? Why would that word be stuck in my head? I guess it's true that you upgrade diamond to netherite, but oh my god, hold the phone! The new experimental netherite feature in 1.20 is using a netherite upgrade to change diamond gear into netherite. But where else have we seen upgrade before? Ah, that's right. Do you see it now, everyone? If not, let me make this crystal clear. The biggest secret Mojang has been secretly hinting at all of these years, and then again with the armor trim addition. When applied to armor, the tooltip does not display the cosmetics, labeled as trims, but instead as upgrades. Now, why would they do that? This seems like a deliberate choice since they use trim pretty much everywhere else in the 1.20 snapshots, so why not just call the category trims, and then the trim material what it is? If we changed patterns and materials, it's still labeled as an upgrade. I mean, I guess a cosmetic can be considered an upgrade? Although it's kind of misleading to label something that just alters the color of armor to be considered to have benefits by the word of upgrade. It's like saying I upgrade my pickaxe because I name it Jim. It doesn't actually get any benefits, it just gets a little cooler. Well, my Minecraft theorists out there, do I have a proposal for you. What if the reason that this new UI tooltip is called Upgrade isn't a misnomer, and it's actually an indicator of something much, MUCH bigger? What if Mojang is hinting at future additions that actually upgrade parts of our armor or at least give them unique abilities. Remember earlier when I was talking about Terraria and the possibility of having separate tiers of armor while still gaining unique benefits within the same tier? Well, today I present that case to quite possibly become true in the not too distant future. But, 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 before I get too ahead of myself here, we have to address the elephant in the room. There is actually a new item in 1.20 that does straight up upgrade your armor. So, it's named that way for that, and not because it's hinting at getting actual unique upgrades in the future, right? That upgrade is, of course, the new netherite template, which we've already looked at, which is now used to literally upgrade diamond armor to netherite. And sure enough, if we slap it in the smithing table with a diamond chestplate, some netherite, and upgrade it, if we take a look at it, we can see... Nothing? Wait, wait, wait. So, the tooltip that denotes an armor has been upgraded, is only absent for the only actual armor upgrade currently in the game? Either some wires got really crossed at Mojang, or this was deliberate. I mean, if we think about it, wouldn't it be weird to be wearing netherite armor that's been upgraded from diamond with a tooltip that says, Upgrade Netherite? Of course it would. 
We already know the armor is now netherite. The only reason I can think of the tooltip being called an upgrade on the trimmed armor is because we'll be seeing more upgrade templates in the future that don't change an armor's material like netherite, but instead add fun new abilities to the game that further increases armor variation. To showcase what this could look like, I've made a few examples using cosmetic armor trims to denote unique upgraded sets of armor. Imagine traveling deep into the previous boring jungles of Minecraft to stumble upon a jungle temple for the hundredth time. Only this time to be poisoned by an unusual poison arrow trap. Like usual, you slowly wait for the poison to tick down while making for the chests. Only to discover that this time, there's a new upgrade template for your armor. The Template of Poison Immunity. When put on a smithing table and applied to your armor, it adds immunity to poison for as long as you wear the armor. Or a rare upgrade template found inside a woodland mansion that's golden gleam on your armor entices all animals to follow you for a while, rather than you needing their favorite foods. Or rarer still, even an upgrade template buried deep in suspicious sand that tells of ancient rituals performed by peoples long extinct, that, when applied to armor, will summon cake wherever the user travels around their feet. Truly, the upgrades are limitless. Okay, so probably not that last one, but I can legitimately see this armor trim system as a way for Mojang to test the waters with templates and smithing, and a whole new loot pool to be filled down the line that adds new templates to upgrade existing armor. Now, these shouldn't be similar to enchantments, and would have to limit themselves to one upgrade per armor to keep them balanced. Maybe not even being able to attach them to enchanted armor at all to preserve balance. Either way, what do you think? Will Mojang continue down the path they've started to let players continue changing up their armored wardrobe? Or do you simply think this text is just an oversight by the developers and won't lead to anything substantial? Personally, I'm a part of the former group, but that's just because I want my Beast Tamer armor set that lets all passive mobs follow me like Snow White without needing to hold food. Let me know your thoughts about future upgrades in the comments below. And if you particularly like the idea of making armor sets with special abilities, then don't worry. I'll have a video going over how I made them and how to create them yourself, coming out real soon. I'll also have a data pack coming out for my level 4 kips on Patreon that has a whole bunch of exclusive pre-built armor sets that you can just set up and use in your game. Don't forget to leave a like if this video is interesting to you at all, and subscribe to see more Minecraft Command content. But until next time guys, see ya!